I thought it was hideous. And you know what? I still think it's hideous. So what's going on guys? Of course, earlier today we had the Detroit International Auto Show in which two cars that a lot of people have been waiting for were finally revealed. The Mark V Toyota Supra and the GT500. And both cars have had their share of scrutiny and criticisms like since we started to have these initial rumors of these two cars coming about. That we've been waiting for the Mark V Supra for a lot longer than the new GT500. Here we are in 2019 and we're finally getting a successor. I think it looks okay. Where exactly will it fit in in the sports car market? The Supra could compete with the other sports cars at the time. The Nissan 300ZX only had about 300 horsepower. The 3000 GT VR4 from Mitsubishi only had about 300 horsepower. And the Supra came in with around 300 horsepower. So all the cars were pretty evenly matched. And I think it's a bit strange that Toyota would bring back the Supra and only about 330 horsepower. Everything else seems to be out of its class at this point. I assume that when this car is released, it will come out with at least 400 horsepower to keep it competitive. It seems like the car will be meant more for track use and corner carving. So of course, Mitsubishi has pulled out of that race. Like Subaru still has the STI and Nissan has its 370Z. I think I was hoping as well as a lot of others that the Supra will kind of live, will kind of live up to this legend and folklore glory that it's kind of earned over the past decade. I was looking for something that would compete more along the lines with modern day muscle cars and the GTR at 50 plus thousand dollars. So as far as the new Supra is concerned, I'm kind of just meh about it. I had big hopes for it, it's kind of a letdown, but I was never really in the market to buy one anyway. Now of course Ford also released today the new Explorer ST. Personally, I'm a bit confused, not sure who asked for a sport version of an SUV. I see it being geared more towards, of course, like the the, the family man or woman um, who's in a car enthusiast but has some kids. But even then, I'm not entirely sure who the audience for this car is, especially with Ford discontinuing the rest of its traditional sedan lineup and moving toward SUVs and crossovers. And of course, leaving us with the Mustang. And speaking of the Mustang, of course, the big thing was the GT500. We've heard rumors about this car. I've seen a lot of renderings and photos up until the release of this car, and I wasn't all that thrilled. Like when I initially saw the front end, the new front end of the 2018 Mustang, I thought it was hideous. Like, and later I got to see it in person, and you know what? I still think it's hideous. In my opinion, the front end of the car slows down way too much. It, the headlights sit too low, and I'm just not a fan of the new front end at all. Well, some of the initial renderings I saw had it but using that headlight. And I was just absolutely not a fan. I've wanted a GT500 ever since they did the refresh. Then I happened to stumble on a 2013 GT500 that was black with the matte black stripes in a dealership one day. And from there, I just knew I had to have one. I'm watching Top Gear. They had a GT500 that was deep impact blue with the white stripes. And I fell in love with that combination. The world finally got to see the new GT500. Actually seeing it for the first time in high quality, it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to look. Now, I don't know if that's because my expectations had gotten so low because of the leaked pictures that we had seen, but it looks really good, especially in that four performance blue with the white stripes. Now, there's a couple clips floating out there that you can check out for yourself. I want to play one here. I've condensed it. The link to the full video will be in the description. And if you haven't seen it, you can kind of get a good idea of what the new GT500 is going to bring to the table. you get a pretty good idea of how the new car is going to look and sound. And you also get to see those massive rotors with those six piston calipers as well as that carbon fiber wing. 
is going to add a lot of extra downforce to that car. It is not being offered in a manual transmission. Now, I know a lot of diehard enthusiasts, including myself, are a bit let down by that. For shifting my own gears and the feeling you get from controlling the car yourself. But I also understand that a dual clutch transmission, these transmissions far and away better than what we're used to as far as performance numbers are concerned. And that's what Ford is moving to. I feel like the Mustang kind of got its name off of how the car made you feel. Like it wasn't always the best car, but the feeling it gave you made you feel like you were really in tuned with the car. And just in my history, I've owned two Mustangs. I had a 03 GT that, as many of you know, was an extremely underpowered car. A little bit later, I moved up to a 2014 GT, which was a huge improvement over the old two valve with a little over 400 horsepower and a lot more creature comforts than what I had been used to. Now, as you look at this car, you gotta remember that the carbon fiber bits are gonna be options. The wing, the wheels, some of the dash. So I'm curious to see what the base model is gonna look like and how much of that aggressiveness that the car has is gonna be taken away by that. The front end of this car is very aggressive and I'm not sure it's gonna look right without that wing. So here's, and here's what we know as far as the rest of the specs. It's a 5.2 liter supercharged cross plane crank engine that's going to produce over 700 horsepower it's going to be mated it's going to be mated to a dual clutch seven speed transmission with the rotary dial selector which again i know a lot of people including myself aren't really a big fan and it really doesn't look like it fits in the car it they pulled it from the fusion and i think it fits in that car kind of looks out of place in the mustang in my opinion those front rotors are 420 millimeter and they fill the space behind those 20 inch wheels almost completely. This new car is getting a carbon fiber drive shaft just like the previous one, getting magnified suspension, as well as a 373 rear differential. So depending on what those final numbers are, this new car, as fast as the old one, uh, but it'll definitely feel a whole lot quicker with that shorter gearing. When Ford released the old one, they boasted about it having a top speed of 200 mile an hour. I think with the 373, then probably won't have that over 700 horsepower and a seven speed transmission is still possible Ford kind of discredited itself a little bit because as they're kind of going along the track you notice in addition to the fact that the car is averaging 6.7 miles to the gallon it doesn't seem very fast in the video i'm sure i'm sure obviously they weren't going full out but i feel like the tack and the speedo in the video to demonstrate how much performance this car has you should at least give it the full throttle because it looked kind of slow in the video. Now, I for one can't wait to see the final specs on this car as well as the official MSRP. I'm thinking based off of the old GT500 and the GT350R, and of course, that's going to come with the almost mandatory nowadays dealer markup, which will probably add twenty to $30,000, if not more, to the car, especially upon initial release. I wasn't all that optimistic about this car, but the official release has definitely piqued my interest again. I'm sure if any of you guys are on Instagram, just like mine, was littered with nothing but pictures and specs and opinions on the new GT500. Drop a comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel for updates. Thank you guys for your time, and I'll see you later.